back. Man, I have been having a wild time. Life has been happening, but I am back working on projects here on the channel, and in honor of 4,000 subscribers, as a sort of remake or a spiritual successor to my first video, I put together a free run cinematic using Unreal Engine and Cascadeur. Here's how all of that came together. People over at Cascadeur reached out to sponsor this video. Cascadeur is an AI-powered 3D animation program with amazing auto-posing tools to rig and create 3D animations, or like we're going to be doing today, for editing some motion capture data. New features include video motion capture, which I definitely need to check out soon, and for pro users, there is now finger auto-posing. If you want to get Cascadeur Pro and support the channel, use my link in the description and code 1WQHB8 to receive 15% off. So as with any project, we had to collect some assets. So for animations, we're starting off with Mixamo, typing in parkour and downloading just about everything in this selection for stringing together some cool flow sequences. I also got this character from Mixamo, whose texture I color adjusted in Photoshop to fit a more Mirror's Edge type vibe. Alright, so for the environment, we are using last month's free asset pack, Brutalist Office, in tandem with some assets from Cargo, which is Kitbash 3D's asset library. This is functionally just about identical to Quixel's Megascans and ports assets directly into your projects. Setting it up was relatively simple, and even with their free selection of assets, there was a plethora of good set pieces for building this city. I may have to buckle down and buy one of these packs, or get top 100 in the latest 3D render challenge going on. Be sure to stick around for that here on the channel. But anyways, let's get into that scene build. Alright, so now let's get into building out the scene itself and putting this mocap data to use. So I first start throwing some geometry down, building out a path of rooftops, while also bringing in our character to make sure that the scale is all accurate. In my last video I discovered how to properly blend animations together in Sequencer, and I'll link that video if you want to check it out. Being able to have smooth motion between animations is pretty crucial for any decent sequence. I've come to learn since my last video it's a pretty unpredictable process at times, so we're going to cut over to me in a little demo project just to show you guys some of the tips I've figured out. I've been trying to explain this in post and it keeps coming out very confusing, so I thought I'd just do a live demo of like a common problem scenario that should show off like all the little tricks I've learned in trying to blend animations. So yeah, let's get into it. So as you can see, we've got our animation here and then when it blends into this jump animation, it is now up too high and teleporting too high. So we're going to start like normal, we're going to base it on about this frame here. We're going to first try matching it with the neck that was. Okay, so this is good. It's still moving upwards, so if we were to say blend it like this, we have this really awful upwards motion that we don't want. So what you can do, turn off the matching, you can now hit match the height, re-match it, and we'll see if that That's a much better blend for our animations. So as you can see, there's a couple other buttons here, and you're going to have to mess around with each of these, like turning on and off the matching X and Y translation, match Z height, and yaw rotation, along with sometimes trying different bones. It's going to yield different results. So be pretty tedious, but this is how I put the level together. So back to the edit. So I was building the environment alongside the animation. I'd add a few moves to the sequence, and then build the environment around it. One, this allows me to ensure I'm only putting detail work into necessary parts of the level, not wasting time on stuff that'll never be seen. And two, it's a lot easier to conform the environment to fit the animation rather than the other way around. But what if we did want to adjust the animation itself? Say, make a character jump from a higher ledge. This is where Cascadeur is going to come in. I have videos on this topic too, which I'll also have linked. But here's a quick speed run of rigging a character from Mixamo for Cascadeur. Import the FBX, set the rotation mode from global to local, turn the arm ever so slightly, select the center socket, change the mirror plane to X, select the other arm and hit the mirror on current frame, go into rig mode, hit the quick rig button, load up the Mixamo setting, done. Now we can import our animation to the Mixamo rig and start editing. 
I wanted to make this character jump from higher, so I started by turning on interval editing mode, which allows us to edit multiple frames at a time. So now I can select all the joints on all of the frames and move the character upwards. I add in a bunch of extra frames in the middle of the animation now to compensate for the new distance. And selecting the latter frames, I move them back down to the ground level. So I can interpolate between these frames to now blend the two distances. What's extra nice is I can now select all the frames once again to see the trajectory of the fall. And now I can move the last frames once again to create a more natural looking arc. I just kind of eyeballed this part. But that's it. This way I can export the FBX back into Unreal and through this process we can adjust an animation as we need to. Back in the level I then position a camera on the head socket of our character for a first person perspective. Adjust the field of view so it's pretty wide and make sure that nothing's clipping too badly with the camera model. Once that camera is added, it was just about adding moves and expanding the level until something of a stopping point is landed at. As the sequence and main track continue to flesh out, I was able to also expand out and work on more distant areas that can be glimpsed between buildings where the horizon is visible. Trying to hide that horizon line was a lot faster than the close-up buildings since overlapping geometry from such a distance doesn't really matter. I can be messy with it and just look for cool shapes. I ran the whole thing as a single shot through the movie render queue, with some extra console commands to improve the motion blur quality. And with that, our render is complete. Alright, so there it is, our finished render for this week. There are some segments where the animation blend came out a bit sharp, but overall I think the results are pretty dang cool. Once again, a huge shout out to Cascadeur, this video wouldn't have been possible without the ability to edit and create animation so quickly. Thanks for watching everyone, a huge thank you for flying past 4,000 subscribers. I can't believe how quickly things are growing here, and I'm so excited to share this creative process with everyone. Be sure to stick around, the new 3D render challenge just bubbled up, so it's high time we start trying to cook up a new epic render for the contest. Hit the notification bell to see that as it comes. I hope this video has been of inspiration, and I'll see you all in the next one.